of course, uh, been a big year for you. Uh, went up to Yale and uh, did your thing up there. How how's it been? Uh, how did the, your freshman year kind of wrap up for you? Uh, freshman year was a uh, it was a big learning curve, big learning experience. Um, I didn't see the field that much, but uh, I had a big role on the practice squad at Yale and. Um, um, I took that role very seriously, and with that role, I helped contribute to uh, the Ivy League championship. And um, so, football-wise, uh, I would say it was more of a learning curve, having to um, get used to the system, get used to how we do things, and um, learning. Uh, I actually had to move positions, so I at in I was at in the high school, so I moved down to three techniques. So, uh, learning a new position and. Uh, um, putting on some weight, it was definitely a learning curve. But once I understood what I was doing and how to do it, it definitely came a lot faster, a lot easier to me. And um, School-wise, uh, I thought school was gonna be a lot harder than what it was, but I, I guess I could say that too was also a learning curve. Once I figured out how to maneuver throughout campus and how to study, how to set time out for myself to do work and X, Y, Z, everything was pretty straight, pretty smooth. Yeah, and that was kind of what I was about to go into because when you hear Ivy League, you think instantly tough academics, tough academics, and that just kind of gets drilled into your head. But uh, what would you say your toughest class was uh, this past year? I definitely say my toughest class was like my math classes. I took a uh, math class both semesters, and uh, it was definitely challenging. It was a step up from high school, and then. Um, along with football being thrown at me and other classes being thrown at me, math was just coming a little bit harder than everything else. But um, I had a good support system around me. A lot of my boys were in the same class. So we would sit down and study together and um, plan out like what to do, how to study, whatever, whatever. So um, it was definitely hard, but once I figured out what I was doing, I definitely maintained. I think I finished up with like a B in both semesters. So yeah, definitely was a learning curve for that class as well. Yeah, how did COVID-19 kind of change a lot of that, whether on both the football end and the mm -hmm. academic end? Uh, I would say it changed, or the football end, it was uh, definitely, it was definitely bittersweet because um, I was really looking forward to coming back for spring ball and, you know, because like I said, I didn't get a lot of playing time during the season. So I was definitely looking forward to coming back and proving what I could do on the field and how I could contribute to the team. And, um, you know, COVID kind of messed that up. But at the same time, they say spring ball is probably the worst time at school because of just how brutal it is and the practice schedule. But so I say, uh, do I regret it? No, because honestly, this time is really like, it's been like a big mental time for me. I've been really trying to get myself into the mind state of um, coming back and dominating and being ready for next season and getting my body stronger, picking up more weight so I can be more successful at the new position that I'm at. So uh, I would say overall COVID is bittersweet. It's, it's definitely messed up a lot of stuff with football, but it's definitely helped me get to a different mind state and a different place. And uh, academically and school-wise, uh, it was just – it was a disaster because um, uh, they say springtime in Yale is the best time of year. Because the weather, I, the weather up north is bad and it's real cold. <laughs> so once it <laughs> once it starts warming up, they say everything gets a lot better. So uh, school wise, it kind of it messed up that. But football wise, I just say it's bittersweet. Right, and of course you come from a very passionate fan base at Huss and. Uh, Shoot, you're probably you're part of one of the greater generations of football at Huss. Uh, how did how would you kind of compare the Yale fans to that, or do they even compare at all? Uh, I would definitely say they have a lot of comparisons. Um, the fans at Huss are very supportive, very behind you, and I would say the same at Yale. Like um, especially the parents of my teammates. Uh, and like everybody, even like, cause my family didn't get to come up for a lot of games. So when my family didn't come up, all my teammates' parents were real supportive, taking me out, showing me love, and even like fans and um, people that came to the games, my, my friends that came to the games were real supportive of everything. So I feel like there was a real um, 
connect. There was no drop off. Everything went pretty smooth from coming to Hus to Yale. It was all supportive and all love. Yeah. Uh, talk a little bit about the the application process because in, in most cases people go just simply fill out a, a sheet of paper and all of a sudden within the next few weeks you're either accepted or denied. For you to go and get into Yale, it took a it took a lot more than that. Yeah, so definitely um um the application process was a lot different because um at regular schools, say if I went to like an NC State or whatever. Uh, I would have, right when I got the offer and committed, I would have automatically been accepted to the school. I wouldn't have to do that much. But um, being at Yale and the Ivy League is very different the way that they run. I still had to, you know, put out a presentable application. And um, being an athlete, I did get a little bit of help from the coaches. But, I mean, I don't think people realize that even though we still get, like, the coaches do, like, a little just push. Like, okay, this is our player. We want him. We like him. Like, this is all we can offer. We try to – they try to put us in the best situation possible for the academic uh, committee to look at us and accept us. So we still have to go through a rigorous application process with that. But we do get a little help. But at the same time, it's not – it's not like a tremendous amount of help. Like, we've had kids who application don't look that good, so they have to do a post-grad year, get their grades up, and then reapply, stuff like that. So it's definitely – a. Um, process with the application yeah because shoot that i only applied to two schools both of them accepted me <laughs> I, I, so i was just like hey i already i already know which two schools i want to go to and i just flipped the coin and went to that one so uh that, that is a big deal and of course couldn't have done it without without top-notch grades how much do you kind of stress that to to your sister now that she's kind of about to go through that same process um with me, I don't really – me, personally, I don't really stress her as much because she's really on top of her game. I think our parents do a lot more of the stressing than I do. I just try to be a role model for her to look up to, somebody that she know that since I do it – or since I have done it, that she can also do it and be successful. So I don't stress her that much because our parents do that. But at the same time, they don't even do that that much. She's just on top of her stuff. Yeah, who, who's the better athlete? <laughs> I say overall, if we talking about athletic ability, I give it to her. She has a lot more athletic ability than me. Yeah, uh, of course, she lost her uh, her track season this coming year or this past year because of uh, COVID. Where do you kind of see the? Where could you kind of see her going? Because she, shoot, her freshman year, she she just came on the scene and blew the roof off. Yeah, I definitely um, believe that she had a pretty good freshman year putting herself out there. And we really thought that this sophomore year she could, you know, blow it out the water, even maybe win a state championship. And obviously that was taken away from her. So I, um, just like me with having this period of trying to get better, work on our craft, I think uh, she's doing the same type of stuff. She's meeting with her trainer, getting better, getting stronger, so she can come back on the scene and, you know, bring something home. Right. And how has uh, COVID really uh, changed the way that you train? Uh, man, it's changed a lot of it. Cause I, I usually go up to the Warlick YMCA and that's usually where I train and have a lot of uh, equipment and stuff. But now I have to hit up like coaches who have little weight rooms in their basements to see if they'll let a small group of people come and um, like, and then ask like every day if I can come, if I have permission to come. So, yeah, it's been real difficult trying to find places to go, but fortunately a lot of uh, coaches that I know and a lot of my friends and their family have been real supportive of me and my friends, so they'll let us come and lift because they know that we can't fall off during this period because if we do, we'll come back and look terrible. So um, I'm real glad that a lot of people are letting us come and use their facilities and their houses and stuff like that. Yeah, one of those is Coach Graham. How, much do you, how often do you kind of uh... – Go knocking on his door to see whether uh, you can get a, a a few workouts in. Man, right now, G, uh, you know, G is a little bit older in age, so uh, Graham is kind of backing off of letting us work out. But um, we definitely miss Graham and miss going to Graham's. Graham is one of a kind, but uh, we've had other outlets to go work out. So we, we still keep in contact with Graham here and there to see what's going on. But as of right now, uh, Graham's kind of, you know, being cautious about it, which is understandable. 
Yeah, he's one of the OGs, without a doubt. But uh, uh, what is what are some of your goals that you have for this upcoming year? Because, of course, uh, I guess number one is to be able to play. But what are some of the other ones that you do have? Uh, yeah, like you said, number one, one of my goals is to come back and be able to play and contribute to the team a little bit more. But another one of my goals is um, to come back and be more stable academically. Even though I had a pretty good academic year, I think I finished with like a like a three, four, eight, like a three, five, somewhere around there. I had a pretty good academic year, but I feel like I could do a lot better in the academic side. So um, another one of my goals is just come back and be more uh, stable academically. And then on top of that, uh, one of my big goals, which is more of a long-term goal, is to make a lot more connections at school. Because um, I've been at school and seen people doing stuff that I never would even think of doing. People starting nonprofits, having their own companies, uh, making apps. Like one of my um, teammates, he was d lineman and he quit football because um, he made this app. And it's like something along the lines of, like when you go into the app and do like press a button or something, it alerts a lot of the uh, police and law enforcement around you and uh, lets you know that there's a school shooting going on. Mm -hmm. So like, and he's been on Shark Tank. He's been interviewed by uh, big news outlets with uh, that. So uh, definitely one of my goals is to make a lot more connections because there's a lot of people doing a lot of good things at, at school. Awesome. Yeah, it, you never know exactly who you can what connections you can make and then it leads to this, that, and the other. And next thing you know, you have a, another source of cash flow. Exactly. <laughs> Which is exactly what I think all of us are kind of looking at, looking for at, at a time like this. Oh, yeah. So, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, talk about your dad. What, uh, what are some of the things that your dad is doing, the defensive guru? Uh, my dad um... – well, right now he's been real chill, just checking in on me, what I'm doing, how I'm uh, – because we have a lot of Zoom meetings for football, making sure I understand what's going on and giving me some tips here and there and uh, making sure I'm on top of my game, working out and uh, uh, getting stronger, getting better, whatever. But uh, other than that, he's really just chilling, going to work, laid back. Right. Yeah, he, uh, he's a defensive mastermind, without a doubt. We, yeah. Uh, just – just kind of chopping it up with both of y'all a few years back. It, it It's amazing how much you just learn just from a simple conversation about just simple defensive principles. And, uh, you don't see that that much these days. Yeah, most definitely. Um, a lot of the stuff that we go over at school, I, it just like second nature to me. It may be different naming. Maybe I, the only thing I have to really get used to is uh, it being called a different name. But other than that, I've already known a lot of the stuff that they'll be saying and, like, when I present it to my dad, he's like, oh, remember we did this, 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 and this is that? And I'm like, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, definitely a blessing in disguise. Yeah. That, uh, speaking of those Zoom meetings, how different is it trying to, say, learn it when you're in a cl uh, the classroom, say, the, the team meeting room, as opposed to trying to go over it via Zoom meeting? Yeah. So, definitely it's a lot a lot harder because, um, you know, a lot of people have different circumstances with, I mean, things as simple as Wi-Fi to people working, have to provide for their families and how the coaches can present things that people understand. It's definitely a lot different because um, um, a lot of like we'll watch film and the film will be choppy. People can't see it, stuff like that. So even though it's hindered a little bit, we've always got the job done with it. If they can't get it over to Zoom, they'll send it out. And like we'll talk over the phone if we have any questions. So our coaching staff has been like real supportive and real um, flexible with the stuff that they've been doing, trying to help us get better. Yeah, it's it's definitely a weird time in that regard because it, it, it's just changing how it's changed just about how everything operates. Yeah. And I guess that they're just basically continue to go as if you're going to play this fall. Hopefully, we're able to able to do that, and a lot of these restrictions and things like that kind of blow over uh of course they're getting into some of that here in north carolina here in the next week or so uh depending on where you're at but uh how often do you kind of uh converse with some of your old Hus teammates oh man i talk to a lot of my teammates 
probably every day, especially um, I give my boy a shout out, Jaheem. I be with Jaheem and uh, <laughs> Nick, uh, Nick Sharp. I be with him and Anthony Dye. I be with them all day, every day. We uh, we really push our uh, push each other. Work out. Uh, we work out all the time. I just left working out with them. Honestly, <laughs> we work out all the time. Push each other because uh, we trying to you know give some knowledge to Nick about college and how the process is gonna go and try to make him have the best senior year that he can. We try to prepare Dye for what he's about to go into, uh, another Division One college, how hard it's going to be, what to expect. And then with me and Jaheim, we were in the same boat, didn't get a lot of PT, trying to get back, get stronger, get better, so we can have more impact. So we all are feeding off of each other, growing off of each other. So it was, I talk to them every day, all the time. And then people like Tony and Prince and Chase, I don't talk to them every day, but we may run into each other. Like I run into Tony working out and we'll work out sometimes. I will lift with Prince sometimes, chase a come by. So yeah, I keep in contact with all my old teammates. Yeah, uh, you got Jaheim saying more than one line uh, for one line answers these days. Yeah. <laughs> we try, we try to get him <laughs> big man, his his conversation. Yeah, he's he's the king of the one liners. I tried to pull as many as many answers and things like that out of him, trying to get him to say something else. But he, he that's just him. He's straightforward and man a few words. So oh yeah, that is what it is. Uh, of course, Coach McCoy went uh, went ahead and went on to James Island. Uh, what are you kind of thinking about this new coaching regime? And uh, what do you, what's your opinion on what you think that they can do here in the next few years to us? I'm not trying to get wrong. It's Coach Coach Thomas, right? Coach Thompson, yes. Yeah, Thompson, Thompson. Okay, yeah, yeah, my bad. But, um, yeah, I know Coach Thompson. I'm pretty cool with Coach Thompson. I feel like he's a pretty good uh, selection for Huss. And uh, I know his mindset. I've talked to him a few times when he was at North Gaston. Like, we'd be at Buffalo Wild Wings, and we sit down, chop it up. So, I know he has a good mindset, and uh, I know he has real good intentions for Huss. And I'll try to explain to some of the boys that don't really know him like that, that he's a good dude. And I feel like that he'll come to Huss and make a big impact on him. Yeah, it seems like he's he was the right fit for what they were looking for. Kind of, and kind of going back to – it's kind of an extension of Coach McCoy a little bit. Yeah, definitely. He's a real relatable guy. Sit down and talk to you. and um, I, I feel like he has a good way of uh, connecting to the kids, get his message across. So, yeah, I definitely feel like he'll be a good fit for us. Right. And especially with what uh, he has coming back with Nick, Malik, of course, Dontavious. Uh Looks like they might be able to keep the keep that ball rolling. For sure, hopefully. And uh, goals, of course, you, you've already said a few of those. But uh, what are what are some that you might have for? Uh, I guess long term goals. We talked short term. What's the long game for you? Uh, long game, definitely the biggest thing for the long game is getting a degree and graduating. That's the biggest thing that my dad always harps on, if you don't do anything else, you need to graduate. Graduate from this school that you're at. So uh, long term is definitely just getting my degree and uh, hopefully, you know, pursuing a career and whatever comes after that. Hopefully, um, if it's my dream, if, well, it's my dream, but if it's, you know, God willing, I'll go to the league, make an impact there. If not, uh, I'll definitely start my career somewhere. Uh, I plan on majoring in environmental studies, doing something along those lines, get into like a government agency uh, with the environment, whatever, whatever. So uh, somewhere along those lines is my long-term goal. Somewhere starting my career with my degree. Awesome. Yeah. It, uh, it's a big case of getting where you fit in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and lastly, uh, of course, you, we wouldn't be anywhere without our parents. Our, uh, how are they just kind of keeping your head on straight through all of this? Because I know that they're probably also going through a lot of changes with, with everything kind of going on. How are they kind of keeping their head on straight while making sure that y'all are good too? Yeah, definitely my parents have been a big factor in keeping me level-headed, you know, with all the stuff going on with COVID and then uh, stuff with like racial injustice. You know, my family has been a real big support system for me because, um, you know, there's been a lot of, a lot of hurt going on in the community. A lot of hurt going on within myself. So my parents have been a big outlet in, you know, helping me uh, maneuver through life and 
try to stay positive in this uh, very shaky time. Right. And I spoke with uh, a few other kids the other day and kind of asked them the same question. Coming back to Gastonia after all this is over with, is that something that you'd want to do? And what would, if you had a chance to do something, what would that, would that be? Uh, definitely one of my biggest goals or one of my biggest things I want to do once I get stable and where I'm at is come back and affect the community. Cause a big thing that I've always kept personal to me is like where I come from. Um, um, you know, I'm from Gastonia. My dad's from Shelby. My mom's from Forest City. Those places that I've been, I grew up in those places and those places that made me the man who I am today. So it would be, I think for me, I would feel personally bad if I didn't come back and affect all three of those communities in a way that helped move the community forward. So one of my biggest goals, or one of the things I really want to do is come back and affect the community, especially the uh, Gastonia. Uh, that's something that I really would want to do for the longest. That's something that me and my boys harp on. Like Jaheim, Jaheim's probably the biggest one. Me and him, we harp on a lot. And one of his things that he likes to say is uh, gratitude is key. That's one of the things he says all the time. And real thankful for it even though it may not be the best, the situations that we in made us the men we are today. So if we can't come back and affect the community in a positive way, I feel like that we personally have done something wrong. Great answer, man. Great answer. Hey, thanks so much for taking some time out because I know you're staying busy. It's a, it's a very hectic time, but it's always good talking to you. And, uh, of course, best of luck in everything that you have going on. Oh, yeah. Appreciate it. No problem, man. All right.